All right, welcome back everyone. So what we're doing now, we've just sprayed this down with some multi-purpose cleaner. We've run the jet wash over it just to try and take most of the, the bulk of the oil that's around about here. I did uh, put some plastic bags on some of the air outlets for the turbo plus the vacuum ho or the air hose, vent hose for the uh, air filter. Now, it's better in here. <laughs> it's not as bad. Uh, but what I want to do though is I want to have a quick look at this oil on the uh, dipstick. Well, initially that is not looking very good. Let's just check that again. So we've got our uh, level there. And we shouldn't go past this line. Let's try that again. And Oh my days. That is basically filled. It's just dripping everywhere. But that is... That was effectively up here. Effective, effectively up there somewhere. What? No. No, it can't be. Is? Wow. That is not just overfilled, that is overfilled. Wow. So we need to drain that out. a little bit of water just on the cap. I think that's just from when I sprayed it. Has this been filled right to the top? No, it's not it's not been filled right to the top but uh, nevertheless it's got too much bloody oil in it. So we'll add that to our to-do list. Take the sump out or take the sump plug out and empty that. Bloody hell. Now, while I'm here as well, I just want to get rid of the uh, cabin air filter just to get this housing out of the way. Give us a bit more space in here so we can see a wee bit more. Eight mils. Let's get that out of there. And we will disconnect that hose from that clip. Let's just pull that out of the way. Now there is actually a air filter in this, a cabin air filter. It's uh, quite uh, quite dirty. So we'll change that. We'll change that at some point. So as we can see, taking that cabin air filter off just gives us so much more access into here to have a look what's going on what do we do next that is the question where do we go next i wanted to bring us in because i have just taken that inlet manifold off and I don't know if you can see, but you see how they are all full of oil. Let's 
so that's not very good so what I want to do is I want to try and pull this off I'm going to try and get that off I need to disconnect the EGR pipe in order to do that but I'll disconnect that EGR loosen the Jubilee clip that's down there pop this unit out and then we'll see how bad but we can see though that those inlet pipes are full of oil absolute full Right, I'll be back in a minute once I get once I get that off. Okay, that was a bit of a pain getting that EGR out. I was trying to remove it from these two bolts, these two bolts here, but I, they were just rounded over, so I had to call it quits and then undo this bolt. It's just underneath the air inlet and then two bolts holding the EGR on or holding the flange on. These here were eight millimeter bolts and this one here was, I had to use a 3 16th to get a bite on that to be able to pull out. Right, two seconds. Anyway, in fact, you might wanna see this as well. So I lost a little bit just as I was doing it, but. Quite thick. Oh uh, yeah. Definitely there's your, thick. there's your problem. <laughs> Nasty. So, if you're curious, this is EGR, which stands for exhaust gas recirculation, not oil recirculation. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that needs a little bit of cleaning. Um, not, not very good at all. Oh well, one for the cleaning pile. In fact, you can see it in there actually, it's all, it's all full of gunk. So yeah, that'll need cleaned up. Cool. It's absolutely everywhere. So that there's the intercooler. Just pulled that out. Four torx bits to take that out. Um, I did have to get the drill in for this one. I had to drill that one out. I did manage to get the other three though. But uh, the problem here is all that oil. So all of that oil has just actually came out of that in our cooler. Fun fact, it's only meant to be air that goes through that, not oil. Aye, aye, aye. Hey, let's pull this uh, oil out of the sump. Now I've already loosened it off and taken the first load out. <coughs> That's it there. There's still plenty more to come. But uh, let me decant this into my container and then we'll see how much more's coming out. But that should have been able to hold enough by standard. Anyway, let me empty it. And I'll try and get you underneath here just so you can see the last bit coming out. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the oil filter, and this head's all damaged. So far it's half filled this container for the second time, so one full one, plus a half just now, still going. It's definitely been well overfilled, but we'll just leave that. 
Let it drip. Oh, can I get back out? Okay, it's a bit tight in here, but while we're waiting on that oil draining, let's get the um, battery out, get it on the bench. It's 10 mils to undo this. Now the battery on the transit is just behind the driver's seat. Uh, it's just underneath the driver's seat. So I'll just get them undone. Just make sure you don't accidentally touch the uh, positive against <laughs> any of the metal work. Now the Transit also does have or can have a, a starting battery which is behind this one. Uh, so you may have two batteries you need to disconnect. This one though appears to only have the one. I will see if I've got the cable in to be able to attach a second one if I can. But we've only got the one to deal with. So we'll disconnect our, our ground first. Or our negative. <coughs> he says. Let's disconnect that negative now. There we go. Get rid of the positive. And I'm not sure on this particular model actually. But I'm pretty sure there's meant to be a metal strap that runs across here that holds this down. It should get bolted into this groove and then bolted in at the sides. But the plate for this doesn't seem to be here. So we might need to add that to the shopping list as well. But anyway, all disconnected. Let's get this out, get it on the bench to get it charging. Now interestingly there is actually a vent hose down here as well. That wasn't actually connected to that battery. So either it's missing the plug or it's maybe a sealed battery. But usually there is venting that's needed for them. It doesn't seem like there's any additional wiring though for a second battery. But I might look into that. Oh, actually, while well I'm behind here, we've got the battery cover. That there probably should have been something, something like that. Oh! We've got another freebie back here. <laughs> a wee cheeky can of WD-40. Brand new. Still got the straw and everything. Nice. There we go. So it's a calcium battery. 650 cranking apps. Banner. With a bull. Uh, I don't really see any date codes on it. Sometimes there's little stickers that tell you basically when it's been, when it was installed. I'm not really seeing any numbers that are giving us an idea. throw this on the charger. Now I do have two different types of chargers. I have this fantastic specimen which was uh, salvaged from the uh, scrap heap as usual. It does work. I did have this stripped apart. I did make a video on this. I was actually going to reverse engineer it but I got so far and then ended up getting bored. So it does work, so I think actually I'm actually going to use this just to test because I've tested it on other batteries already, but um, I'd be quite interested to see how well this one does. Now, I do have another one, which is a smart charger one. 
this will do your standard batteries but it's also really good for the start stop uh, AGM types so you do have some different modes on this charge repair maintenance winterize but uh, yeah I'm gonna leave this one just now because it's much slower uh, this one only kicks out 4 amps whereas this one's an 11 amp charge we'll give it a try So, we just want to make sure we got this in the right one. So positives on this side. Negatives on this side. This should click on if it's going to do anything. In fact, is that any better? Mm. Not so much. Maybe that will be able to still as we can see the lights here, there's also lights on this side as well to show the status of charts. Let's see actually if maybe we can put them on the screen. Anyway, that should turn on. Uh, I'm going to put this on a maintenance free option. Did click. Now, I don't know how much I trust this to be honest, but it says 20% charts. <laughs> Plug it in. And that's it. Buzzing away. Snap bolt. Well, not snapped. I had to drill it off. Uh, so I drilled this screw out. <clears throat> we need to get rid of the rest of it. So let's try and remove that. So I'm just going to put a wee centre punch in the middle. somewhere there oh, I thought I'd snapped a lot of these oh, we're gonna have to make that one work Just now need to find a replacement screw for that. We're good. Let's take a wee look at this turbo and see where it failed. I did actually take a video uh, on my phone. So I'll add that in here just to bring you up to speed. What a pure <laughs> Got it out. This particular stud here ended up giving me the problems unbelievable had to get the dremel out and try and cut that nut off no space whatsoever still opens but I think we see the problem <laughs> now I'm no expert I don't think that should have that play in it. Let me try and hold it still. And I feel as if this should be tighter. But, uh... I think the blades look alright, though. Ah, oh, it's not going to work. <sighs> Making you dizzy. Oh, 
Oh, I can't hold it and hold this button at the same time. Anyway. That there seems to be flopping about in the breeze. As well. <sighs> what do you think? So there obviously we just had a quick look at, you know, some different elements, but I really want to find out, <clears throat> I really want to find out, you know, where it's went wrong, why is it pouring out oil from here. Now if you don't know how the turbo works, it is actually relatively straightforward. Basically you have an attachment to the exhaust, which is this part here. Exhaust gases come in, they spin that turbine, that turbine will then draw in air from the uh, air flower, and then it ejects that air, so air comes in here and the compressed air shoots out this bottom pipe into the intercooler where it cools down or cools down that air and then straight into the engine giving us boost now they are lubricated so there's an oil line that feeds in top and bottom and there is also a vacuum uh, or a, a pressure line basically from here over to the uh, wastegate. In fact, two settings. Let me grab the wastegate. So, this is the wastegate. Just bolts on basically to these two bolts here. Just clamps on. That vacuum line that we've seen at the bottom there connects up to here, uh, or that pressure line. Now, basically, this is all mechanical, it's not smart, it's not got electronics. Basically if the pressure gets too high, if there's too much pressure being generated here, what it does is it slides this piston in and out. This end attaches to the manifold and it basically attaches to this little lever here. And when that little lever opens and closes, it just opens and closes that little valve and basically that just means when the pressure's too high if there's too much exhaust coming in shoots up round here through that hole and then out the exhaust so in normal conditions that's closed and then as soon as there's too much pressure the wastegate opens up opening this door and sends the exhaust the exhaust gases straight out Now while I've got this in my hand, I did have a few problems with this. One of them was this particular stud here. Don't know how well it'll show up on the camera, but as you saw from the video, uh, basically the nut here was, I don't know what happened. It just basically stripped all these threads and then it wouldn't come off. So I had to use a Dremel to cut it off. So what I'm actually curious about though, is trying to dig into this a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper and try and get into it. Now, I've already basically removed everything that I can, but I do notice though there is a C clip here. So let's try and get the the uh, C clip pliers into there and see if we can remove that ring. And then hopefully this cartridge will come out and we'll be able to see a wee bit closer what's going on. Yeah, it's pretty seized in there. Let's put it in the vise, try and knock that out. One try and do is just break the seal on this clip. Some of my newly acquired uh, punches. Let's just give that a wee.
see if we can just get something in behind it. I'll probably go flying. It does actually have quite a bit of tension on this. My days. So there we go. C clip out. It's just going to pop out. Nothing else there. It's really just one piece of aluminium. Don't think it's steel. Yep, aluminium. So we can see here, I think what's ultimately happened is we can see that there's not really much holding it back on this seal on the uh, turbine itself and I think ultimately oil's getting passed and then it's mixing in here spinning round and then ejecting out this way into the inlet and I think ultimately that's what caused the runaway exhaust gases in spins that round spins the turbine and then throws throws the oil out. Now, I don't think this is overly complicated. We can see that obviously there's a face here where it pressed up against the, uh, the aluminium body. So there is an O-ring. I wonder if that was maybe letting the oil past. Still pliable, still soft. I don't see any major problems with that but as we saw from the video though this was wobbling about let's see if we can maybe undo that nut and take this off now, I don't know if this is maybe a left hand thread try number two go so it was left hand thread Oh, that's that bit off. That there is the fan for the inlet. So that would be pulling the air in. That just knocked off. We can see though that there's obviously oil got in front of it here. Maybe that's normal, maybe it's not. If you know, <laughs> leave it in the comments. If we look at the exhaust side, we've got the exhaust blade here. And that's basically on the shaft. Now, 
how well it'll come through but there might be some sort of ring on there there seems like there's a compression clip there we've got some sort of brass washer with holes in it again seems to be some sort of ring in that again some sort of split split washer here which maybe is what's creating the seal there's nothing else and then this little brass part it looks like there's some oh well i thought actually that was a seal but it's not it's it's oil it's ground up oil compressed oil or carbon from the exhaust that's what that is in there then we have the back end of it we have this cap now we can see here it is absolutely stinking you can tell that this has been mixing with exhaust it's got that really carbony sooty diesely <laughs> smell about it now whether or not that's normal for this don't know but it's certainly interesting again it's just coated with carbon from the exhaust it's thick with it you can scrape it off so i wonder if effectively you know it started to fail and then this this carbon became like an abrasive now it does look like we've got another C-clip here. You ever get that feeling it's going to get me right in the flipping eyeball? You get that feeling? I do. I think the camera got bored. Turned off. So another one of these little bushings fell out. And uh, this cap here that seems to come up and it released another one of those brass dongers so to cut a long story short not overly complicated but definitely there is a bit of uh, engineering that goes on here now ultimately I'm not worried about this because uh, I'll need to get a new one anyway but it certainly was interesting to take that apart have a look inside it and see what makes it tick now if you do have any interesting facts or information on turbos then please leave them in the comments below ba, ba, ba. interesting